He was excited though, so that's good. Good. I got it. I got it. Jay. <clears throat> Sorry, I lost my voice, guys. So. Is this mine? Yeah. Yes, sir. We're not with the of what's going on. Yeah, I got a, cat, a little bit of a cat voice going on. Every time I regain it, I lose it again. So. Just, uh, I mean, I know not a whole lot for you guys because, again, yeah, not a lot of pads yet, but what do you seen out of the guys so far? Yeah, I think uh, the, the, definitely the work ethic is there. Um, in the classroom, the meeting room, as well as on the field. I think they're doing a really good job uh, growing. I think that's probably where we've matured the most as a unit from spring ball to, to fall camp, which is where I thought we needed to come out of fall or come out of spring. Come out of spring, I thought we had some talent, but just the mental part of it wanted them to get better in that way. And they really attacked it over the summer and they're attacking it right now um, on a daily basis. So I'm excited about that and the growth that we've, we've shown there. How much I mean, different do you feel about the depth in this room as compared to maybe a year ago? Yeah, I think it's you can just tell on the field, you know, we can and we use depth chart lightly around here during fall camp, but you know, you don't really tell much difference between the ones and twos and then some of the threes as well. You don't really tell much different when they're out there on the field. They're all executing. I think that's a testament to the three guy the four guys that are up in the center, uh, which is Connor Lou, Tate Johnson, Braden Joyner, and Dylan Senda. Because they're, they're, they're controlling traffic there, and those four guys are probably the best mental guys we have. And so they're able to get everybody on the same page. I think that's probably the, the, the thing that's helping that depth continue to grow is because I think everybody knows what to do because those three or four guys play center. How much value have you seen in, in bringing in a guy like Percy, you know, SEC tackle, and, you know, not only what he brings, but maybe, you know, being able to slide in a guy like Dylan. And just, yeah, just how much value have you seen in the addition of Percy? Yeah, just off the top, it, it allows Dylan Wade to play the position that he's more fit to play. Although I thought he did a good job at tackle, he's more fit to play guard um, here and at the next level. So it benefits him in the future. They able to show some versatility, which is what the National Football League is looking for. And then bring it in Percy. I think, number one, it stimulates competition. I think it's allowed people behind him, like Tyler Johnson, to know that they got to go try to beat that guy out. So it's, it's helped them grow. And then Percy has is, is allowed us to have a, he's a big body, big athlete. He's got to be more consistent with his technique and stop relying on, I'm 6'8", 350. I can just out. He's bigger than everybody. He's got to rely on his technique, but it's pushing him to be able to do that. So it's brought a lot of value to the room. So excited about that, uh, that, that progression there. What do you like about Percy right now? Um, I like that he's growing technically speaking. I mean, I think in the spring, um, he was just trying to figure out what we were doing in terms of the play calls and snap counts. And I think now the biggest jump is he's trying to find his technique and me as a coach trying to figure out what technique works for him. Um, and, and cause he's a different body. Everybody's different and every body type is different. And he is a unique body cause he's so big and, and so broad that some of the techniques I teach maybe to the more athletic body types, the smaller body types don't fit for him. So just trying to find that mesh of what can work for him, it's been an exciting week to see that progression. So excited to see where the next two weeks takes us there. Yeah, you don't mention the, the centers. How yeah. much do you put on their shoulders in terms of, you know, checks and all those things that, and how much they have to do? Yeah, they do, they do everything. They call the front, they ID the, the point, every play that gets the, the direction of the block going. Um, them and the quarterback are communicating in terms of flipping protections and flipping all these different things and, and so a bunch. Um, and I think they'll probably tell you that. And being a center myself, it's, I'm a little, little bit harder on those guys than anybody else because I know if they are right, then everybody else is going to be right too. Um, so a lot. And they're all taking it, taking it on and they're all doing a good job with it. You talked with us last year uh, about too tall, how excited you were and his potential. Where do you see him now? I mean, how, how far has he come? Yeah, I think uh, credit to Coach Dom and Miss Danielle because they transformed his body. He's up to like 315 pounds right now, staying consistent there. The strength is there. The natural power has grown. That was really the only thing really missing in his game last year. You can probably tell sometimes kind of getting overpowered. Well, now he has power. Now he has that year in the weight room to back that up. So he's always been very good mentally and athletically. Now he's pairing up that year in the, in the weight room and in this nutrition. So he's uh, he's been a very bright spot in camp uh, for us up front. So. Um, really, always been excited about him, but I think his best ball is ahead of him here and at the next level. What about, about 
Tyler and, and Seth, those other tackles, yeah. having some guys so athletic. Yeah. How, how nice is that to see that and have a chance to develop guys like that? Yeah, Tyler Johnson, I can't, uh, I can't speak more about his growth over the last year. Mentally, physically, he's very similar to Too Tall in terms of he just needed a year in the weight room to get it all figured out. And he's got his weight up there. He's strong at the point of contact. Really good body quickness. Um, we're going to count on him at some point. And, and he's he's doing a really good job. So I'm excited to kind of see that competition of him, you know, trying to propel himself forward as well. So and it's Seth the same way. You know, Seth was a one-year high school player um, at a powerhouse. He was from Nebraska, moving to Vegas. So he was similar. His background and Tutal's background very similar. Not a lot of high school football, and then one year at JUCO, really, and then he's here. So he's kind of gotten past the point where he's swimming and he's kind of trying to, to make those strides. So he's doing a, doing a nice job for us as well. So you fought really hard to get Connor Lou uh, when you guys first got here. Tell me, has he been the guy you expected him to be? Yeah, no question. He's, he's the total package leader. He's our leader. He's a team leader. So absolutely, he's uh, just a phenomenal human being, too. So uh, he, he's, uh, he's certainly lived up to to the expectations in every way and exceeded them. So excited to be his coach, proud to be his coach. Where's he gotten better in the last nine months? Uh, knowledge, last year as a freshman, a lot of little bit on, uh, uh, on Gunner and Cam to kind of get everybody in, in line. He's now overtaking that part of it. Functional strength has gotten better. And then now it's just progressive technique and kind of getting some specialty calls where, you know, a less experienced center might not be able to get us in that spot. He's able to kind of guide us in the right direction. What, what are you looking for out of this offensive line group between now and when you guys really start to shift here towards the opponents you know, here later as well? Yeah, just, just fundamentals and technique. Just getting better at the day to day process. Uh, don't don't fall out of love with uh, the basics because I believe if we can do that, we can get better fundamentally. It'll show on Saturdays way more than anything else. So I'm, I'm proud of the progression through week one, but I'm really excited to see how much we can grow into the next week and then leading up into into game time. You've talked about it. I guess we've talked about every position except right guard. Talk about Jeremiah and, and the, the young guys you've got working in car. Yeah, so Jeremiah's done a great job. First full year we've had of him because he didn't practice in the spring of 23 so he's a little behind going into camp last year and didn't get as much reps as he wanted but credit to jeremiah of, he was not where he wanted to be last year and he took initiative of that and got himself in shape got himself on the same middle page as everybody else in terms of the playbook and now the physicality part's always been there we've known that so he's he's got everything in line and heading in the right direction so He's been really, really, uh, a really positive uh, light over the last seven days. So his progression's really, really, uh, uh, it's there and it's continuing to grow. So excited about that. And then the young guards, Brady Joyner's done a phenomenal job. Um, you know, I think he's can play all three in those interior positions. Another guy that's grown up a lot in this program. So excited about his growth. And then DeAndre Corder um, is as a football player. So I'm excited. Got him in the summertime, so get him, get him in shape. He's still got a little bit of ways to go there, but he flashes and when he flashes, you can kind of see the player in the heat of the court. So excited about that. EJ Harris as well doing a good job. Um, being steady and being solid there as a, as a guy that's going to finish. Jake, you guys have.